this loom is uh, generally called a colonial or barn loom, so we've got this large beam construction. And it's typical of a loom that you'd see being used in the colonial period in this country, 1600s um, into the early 1800s, for example. Um, maybe 10 to 20 percent of people would have these in their homes, but mostly they'd be in a shop. Okay. So at that time, you're talking about a year's worth of labor uh, from, say, if we're talking about wool that would be used here in Michigan, you're going to shear the sheep, you're going to card and clean the wool, you're going to spin, you have to have it woven, and then you make your clothes. So it's a very long process, and you didn't get clothes very often, you didn't have many of them until we start getting machines. Uh, but the, uh, the looms here are um, machines to help us do that weaving process that maybe the kids are familiar with, with pot holders or something, all, doing it mm -hmm. all by hand, which is how people have woven for thousands of years. Right. But now we uh, have sped up the process with the, these machines. Uh, so what we have here is uh, threads going from the back beam to the front. They're called warp threads. And I've got about 400 of them here. This is called a uh, harness or frame loom. You can see we've got two wooden frames in place. Uh, you can put more on. In this case, we're just going to do a simple weave uh, that you can see being done in the, uh, the rug. It's uh, like the pot holder. You're going to take your left and right thread and go over and under every one of the stretched front to back threads. Only, since I have so many and they're so tiny, we want to do this more efficiently. So we're going to divide our warp threads into two groups. They're called, they would be the evens and the odds. And we're going to thread them through these string pieces that have eyelets. They're called heddles. And if you look down here, they are connected um, through a series of ropes to pedals on the floor. So now, instead of having to take a needle and go over and under every one by hand, what I can do is step on a pedal and we're going to use two big groups of threads for our weaving. We have the odd ones pulled up now as the pedal pulls the one harness up and pushes the even ones down. This nice opening is called a shed, and that's where our left and right thread, which is called the weft, and it's placed in this wooden carrier called a shuttle, is going to be pushed through. And you can see the thread following along. When I release the pedal, there we're laying over and under every other thread. This is the beater bar. So as I pull that toward me, that beats that weft thread nice and tight with all the other ones. I'm going to step on the opposite pedal now to come back the opposite way. And what happens is the threads on the bottom come up to the top, and the top threads are pulled down. They change places. And in doing that, we crisscross our threads right down here, and that keeps that last throw of the uh, thread from unraveling, and now we can go back the other way. And beat it nice and tight. So once you get the uh, machine all set up, which is called warping the loom, uh, which takes two or three days for a couple of people, it's a very long process, then uh, somebody that's real good at this can weave on this loom about 12 inches of cloth an hour which at that time was considered very good. Uh, and eventually, uh, we're going to add power. Uh, starting in the 1700s, the Industrial Revolution is going to come into play. And we're going to add water and eventually steam and electric power to the looms. And they're going to work basically the same way, but we're going to speed them up and make them very efficient. So a loom like the one behind you now, that's an electric-powered loom from the 1920s, uh, used in the Highland Park Ford factory here in the area. Uh, it was um, used to make upholstery samples. And using electricity now, you're going to weave about 25 feet an hour instead of just one foot. Okay. And then modern machines go much faster as well. Here, so. You have harnesses still that are going to be raised and lowered. Uh, we have shuttles on the left and right. Uh, there are no pedals. So that has changed. You see that heavy chain on the left-hand side? That's called a dolly. And uh, that's like a programming chain, basically. They can uh, change the circular or tubular pieces uh, to be read by the machinery on the upper left, and that determines the movement of levers and the raised and lowering of the harnesses. And if you notice, uh, it doesn't have any safety features on it. You notice there's no cages. 
so that's another reason that we couldn't use it. Of course, at that time, that wasn't uh, a consideration. And uh, especially in the early factories, uh, one of the reasons that they wanted the children and the women to work was because they had small hands and small bodies. And they would have large factories filled with these, these looms. And they were the ones that could, be, could get in and when a thread breaks, you have to tie it by hand, you know, re repair it. And the children could uh, get in between there and do a lot of the oiling and uh, mechanical repair.